This is a mini lecture from Dr. Ripley at Regent University on ANCOVA. It should be paired with the factorial ANOVA videos for my class. Um, and it comes after the factorial ANOVA videos. So I'm assuming you've already read some material and watched the factorial ANOVA videos before watching the ANCOVA videos. So what is ANCOVA? It is the analysis of covariance. And it is an extension of an ANOVA. It asks the question, is there a difference between levels of some factor or variable after evening out or statistically controlling for the effects of some other continuous variable? The formula looks something like this. The dv equals the overall mean plus the group effects plus the effects of the covariate plus error. So to get into this a little bit, there's a nice little video that I'm going to put a link on that explains sums of squares as a measure of dispersion. Um, and so some people find that helpful to go into that further. It's optional for my class in terms of keeping notes and um, exam questions and that sort of thing. But some people find it helpful to have that information to kind of have a better mental map of what's going on. Sums of squares is converted to between groups and within groups variances by dividing by the corresponding degrees of freedom. So what's happening is that you're doing a formula behind the scenes that's a mean squares, which is, is a dispersion measure, right? So it sums of squares over degrees of freedom. Um, and it's looking at the between groups over the within groups. So some people start to get a little bit lost here, but what I want you to pay attention to is just the components here, right, of what's happening. You've got dispersion measures, and then you've got between the groups, right? So remember, it's a group comparison. So if it's males and females, so what is the variance difference for the sums of squares between males and females, right? And then the, deg the degrees of freedom between males and females. And then another measure of dispersion within each group. So just for women on their own, and just for men on their own, and the degrees of freedom within each group. Right? And so you take those components and you build your ANOVA and your ANCOVA from there. So the F value is a ratio of the mean squares between groups over the mean squares within groups. This is true for both ANOVA and ANCOVA. Right? They're both doing the same thing. So you can break that down um, and look at it. So if you have a large F value, that means you have a large between group variance and a small within group variance, right? Because it's a ratio. And if you have a small F values, that means you had a smaller between group variance and a larger within group variance. And that's why a large F value typically it you know becomes more probable, significantly different. And a small F value, the smaller it gets, the less likely that you have significant differences in your groups. So Hopefully this is helpful. Um, remember that sums of squares is reflective of variance. All right, so that's what's happening within group and between group. My hope is that you can at least understand that kind of ratio issue of between group and within group and that it's dealing with variance. So that's the spread of the bell curve. So I'm going to give you some examples of ANCOVA now. Okay, so the ANCOVA is the analysis of covariance. What you might want to do, say you want to study the effects of therapy on family stability, right? So is therapy helpful in helping people feel like their family is more stable? And what you do is you have a sample of people and half the people are assigned to get treatment and the other half get no treatment, control kind of some sort. Um, and you know what, you're doing this study and you think, you know, I think the age that the children are in the family is actually an important factor. So I'm going to get some kind of composite age of children kind of number that I'm going to put into my study because, you know, it might just be different for people with young children versus older children or something. But this isn't really my hypothesis. I don't think age of children is going to predict family stability. I just think it's an important variable. And hopefully that is, you know, borne out in previous research and you're basing your covariate on that. So then your question that you're asking, your research question is, does the effect, does therapy have an effect on family stability when controlling for age of children? So it makes a more sophisticated research question. And ANCOVA is a situation when you have a variable of interest to your study, but it's not part of your major hypothesis. But you know from previous research that it's probably important or you suspect according to a theory that it's important 
but you don't want to add yet another independent variable to your study because that just gets more and more complicated. You know, even a two-way ANOVA is complicated, much less if you're adding multiple covariates, right? So statisticians were looking for simple ways to try to include additional predictor variables without having an eight-way ANOVA, right? So they said, well, let's, let's see if we can put covariates in there. Um, and so that's what you do. And ANCOVA, um, let's say that we want to predict people's response to natural disaster, like a tornado or a hurricane or something. Like how freaked out are they? This will be the natural disaster freak out measure is our um, dependent variable. And you can think about a lot of things that might predict how people respond to natural disaster, right? So one might be whether they feel like they have the resources to be able to respond to it. Like, can they leave the area or do they have um, a place to go in their home in case of a tornado or hurricane? And do they have the money to be able to drive away and stay in a hotel or, or friends and family to stay with outside of the area? Things like that. Um, so you can probably think of like 50 things that would predict um, a response to natural disaster, but you can't study all of them and have a 50-way ANOVA. So um, you can't put all the predictors in, right? That would be crazy. So you may pick your one, if you're, if you're a little crazy, maybe up to four independent variables, and then make any other important predictor variables either constants, that's one way to handle it, which is just design, which would essentially say, I'm only going to study people who have low income, for instance, right, and that don't have many resources. And so I'm, I'm going to, you know, it's not good for generalizability, but it, do, it is good for design, just to make something constant. Or say you think that gender matters, and I'm only going to study women in my study, things like that. Or you could make the variable a covariate, which will statistically control for it um, through the way that, you know, SPSS runs it in the behind the scenes mathematical um, mystery. So there are several definitions of covariate and I've given you some here. Um, it's the variable whose effects have been partialed out of the results. It's one way of saying it. Or it's a variable that's not controlled for in the design of the study, so it's not held constant, right? And it's not, you know, forcing people to levels of treatment and some things you can't you know you can't force people to levels of income for instance um, covariates are random variables you treat as co-committants uh, co committed or other influential variables that also affect the response and covariates are also uncontrolled variables you didn't force them on people and um, they influence the response but they're not expected to interact with any of the independent variable factors that are tested at the time Therefore, if they are present during the experiment, then they would show up as measurement error um, if you didn't control for them. What is measurement error? Um, all research has some error. Um, you'll have measurement error due to the participant not responding as you expect, the researcher not measuring things well, the measure itself not being a great measure. Particularly self-report things are never perfect, um, but even a blood pressure monitor is wrong sometimes. Um, anything that you don't measure that was an important or even a, even mildly important predictor is going to show up as error. Um, so looking at your natural disaster example, that's going to be anything we didn't measure. Like, um, you know, how anxious are you about hurricanes? Well, you know, maybe we didn't measure where you live, uh, you know, or where you grew up. And uh, maybe that's important. So if we didn't measure it, it's going to come out as error variance in the pot of, of data. So there are three major purposes of doing an ANCOVA. Um, the first one is to increase the sensitivity of the test of the main effects and in interaction by reducing error term. So remember I just said error is anything you didn't measure um, as well as error in measurement. So a covariate will help us to have a better understanding of our prediction. A second purpose is to adjust the mean scores on the dependent variable to what they would be if all participants scored equally on the covariates. And that's actually what's happening behind the scenes. The, the um, computer is basically changing the dependent variable scores to equal them out based on the covariate or covariates. A third one is a special one that I'm just introducing to you. We won't ever do it in class, but this is if you're doing a MANOVA and you're trying to assess, um, MANOVAs have more than one DV, right? So you're trying to assess one DV after adjusting for another DV. So you take one of the DVs and you treat it as a covariate. Um, and so you run a 
and Kova that way, but you're actually trying to do it as a Manova. It's kind of a tricky little thing, but I just want you to be aware that that, that is a purpose that sometimes people do, and it's legitimate. Okay, so what does this do it that I'm doing? Um, when you're running an ANCOVA, it's like an ANOVA, and it's looking at whether the mean differences in the dependent variable between the groups are larger than expected by chance, right? And But before it does that ANOVA, it's going to adjust the dependent variable so that the scores for everybody are more equal based on the covariance. The ANCOVA can do something the ANOVA can't do. It can give us a precise look at the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable after removing the effects of the covariance. Okay, hope this is helpful to everybody.